Okay, today's time lapse is my first portrait painting in Clip Studio. Really liking Clip Studio so far. Uh, the drawing and painting desktop experience is very different than the iPad. I have to say that I really am liking having so much more screen real estate. As wonderful as Procreate is to use and as fantastic as the interface is, having that extra canvas space on the desktop, I because I have like a 24 inch monitor, I don't know, it's just really nice that you can just see things really well. And I have a couple of screens at my desk, so I'll put, you know, reference photos on one side and then my work on the other. And it's just a really pleasant way to work. I'm certainly not done with the iPad, but um, yeah, I, this whole, you know, the whole process is growing on me. So I wanted to try my hand at some darker skin tones. So I found a, a really cool reference photograph for a woman and I was using that for the lighting and kind of the positioning. And then I thought, you know, I wanted to, you know, stretch the imagination a little bit so we make some changes here to that later on it's not really a reproduction at all of the photograph but it definitely is um steals from a lot of what's in there so in the beginning i started just trying to look at the photograph and figure out the colors on my own and honestly i that was going pretty well i kind of was looking at what i was the colors i was putting down and thinking I'm doing a bad job of this and I should probably just color pick from the image. But in reality, I was, once I started color picking from the image, I had most of the right tones and stuff down just by looking at the photo. So I think I need to just trust myself and do, do more of that in the future because that actually went pretty well. I always end up shifting the colors and moving things around anyway. So, you know, once you kind of get the basic tones down, then I end up color picking from the actual painting and then you're blending and moving stuff around and so the whole thing tends to shift anyway and at some point I'll often will go in and do some curves or hue or color adjustment on the entire layer anyway so it's all kind of malleable. Getting her basic form down was pretty tricky. Her her torso is sort of turned one way and her face is almost straight on but turned just slightly which is it, this gives me all kinds of problems. In fact I never really get her jaw and mouth way I think in the position that makes sense I I went back and forth and moved stuff around a lot I also move her eyes around a lot in the beginning trying to sort of make sure that the tilt of her head makes sense and that they're in the right place you know it's amazing to me to watch people just draw a, a in proportion face on the first go just just putting everything down where it goes and not having to do, not having to move anything around, it's incredible to me because so much of these at this point is just shifting pieces and parts around to make it all look right. I'm getting faster and I'm getting better and I'm getting, you know, a better renditions on the first go, but it's slow work. So yeah, it's taking time. I also decided to take, uh, like the tank top just got on and turn it into a dress. I thought that would look kind of cool and uh, you know putting some color in her hair too some purples and blues I thought looks kind of neat like I don't know ribbons or something it's kind of becoming a thing that I enjoy doing for whatever reason gives the whole thing a little bit more color I also decided to change where she was looking I wasn't sure if I wanted to go straight on or her looking to the side I ultimately decided that her looking off to her right is like a a more interesting composition so I, I stuck with that Eyes are still not easy, still still working on those, but they're they're coming along. We're making progress. I'm quite happy with her nose. The last couple of noses that I've done never really turned out the way that I wanted, but this one this one I feel I kind of got I kind of got the planes to make sense and yeah, that that worked out okay. You know, it's funny as I do these, there's like different parts that sort of progress and and are a little bit better and other parts that give me new challenges. You know, every single piece is just you never really know what to expect. At some point I realized I've painted her head too too small. <laughs> I, I've got to like, I shrink her body down a couple of times so that her proportions make more sense. I really like that you have this thumbnail up in the corner of Clip Studio all the time because it's really nice to be able to just look up there and see if there's any kind of major problems with your composition. That is one thing about the iPad that is frustrating. Nah, I wouldn't say frustrating, but maybe less than ideal is that when you want to look at the thumbnail, you have to basically pinch the whole canvas down and kind of, you know, look at it. Maybe there's a feature that will display it the whole time on screen, but I don't think I'd even want that because the screen real estate on my iPad Air is pretty small. So 
yeah, again, the, the screen size thing is is an issue. I try and put a little purple into his, her skin tones to kind of bring it, tie it together with the purple in her hair without making it look like she's bruised or something. So I don't, I don't know if I got away with that or not, but I don't know. We gave it a shot. I think her hair is really cool. I really thought it looked neat in the photo and I wanted to kind of capture at least some of that in the painting. Ultimately, I decided that her dress looks kind of like a wedding dress, which is fine, but I don't know, wasn't really feeling that. And it was sort of blending into the background wrong. It wasn't looking right. So I decided to go with blue, ultimately. I think it turned out okay. You can see on the right that I'm basically using layers as just save points, like a history. I don't know how the history works in Clip Studio. Maybe I don't even need to do that. I really for the most part, prefer to work just on one layer. I don't need a lot of layers. I just oftentimes will duplicate it so that I can go back if I'm, you know, every time I want to try something new, I, I end up making a new layer so that if I, if I hate what I'm trying, I can go back more easily than, than repainting stuff. At some point I realized I've rendered her lower body and chest and shoulders and neck a little bit too specifically, and it's distracting, I think, from her face, which is the focus of the image so I go in and kind of get a bigger brush and try and mess that up a little bit while maintaining the forms I hopefully I got away with it we'll see and then towards the end of the painting which I should have done much earlier I, I flip it horizontally to kind of catch some mistakes and when I do that I realize oh my goodness this thing looks complete <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff that is completely wrong with this image I definitely should have done that earlier and so I've spent quite a bit of time after this thing is pretty much finished and well rendered uh, fixing things that I have discovered by flipping it around. I never quite fully get there. It never really, the image doesn't quite work in the other direction, which probably means uh, it's not, it's not quite right. But, but you know, I'm still learning, so. You gotta, you gotta be patient with yourself. You can't be too hard on yourself with this stuff or you'll stop having fun. You'll just feel bad about it and that's not enjoyable. It's not the point at all. You just do the best that you can do and every time you do a new piece and you, you learn something, which is also I think why it's important to finish, you know, maybe you don't have to finish everything, but try and finish a lot of what you do so that you can, you can pull those lessons out of the experience. So at the end here, I kind of feel like it's looking very, I don't want to say photorealistic, but it's looking, I don't know, the whole thing doesn't look like art at the end. It kind of just looks like a person. So I decided to add some kind of like sequence things with a brush on her dress. I have this huge brush back I haven't really messed that much with, so I start just kind of playing around with stuff. And we end up getting some splashes of, of color in her hair, and none of it really makes any sense, but it's not supposed to. It's just supposed to look cool. So hopefully I succeeded on that front. So yeah, that's basically it. Thank you so much for taking some time to, to watch. I hope you are well. Lots more videos on the way. Take it easy.